the purpose of a fin, this is an extended surface, is to get more heat transferred than your system would have without the fin. So fin efficiency and fin effectiveness are two different ways to measure the efficiency and effectiveness of fins as compared to how the system could behave in more ideal situations. My picture here shows a full heat sink composed of many fins, but for this analysis, we're gonna look at just one fin by itself. And we'll start off by analyzing the fin efficiency. If the wall temperature is hot and the air temperature is cold, along the length of a fin, the part of the fin that's really close to the wall is gonna be the same temperature as the wall. But across the length of the fin, as energy escapes from the fin to the atmosphere, the further away from the wall you get, the cooler and cooler the fin temperature will be. The entire fin will not be the same temperature as the wall. And the longer and longer you make your fin, eventually you'd make it long enough so that the end of the fin is actually the same temperature as the air. And then the further longer you make it doesn't help heat transfer at all because it's already the same temperature as the air, so there wouldn't be any more heat transfer. Essentially, all the heat entering the fin would have already escaped to the atmosphere by convection. And so efficiency is a measure of how much actual heat transfer we get when accounting for this decreased temperature along the length of the fin versus how much heat transfer you get if the entire fin were the same temperature as the wall. So really conductive metals, something like copper with a really large value for K that conducts heat really well, those metals will be really good at transmitting heat by conduction, so most of the fin will be very close to the temperature of the wall. Those metals will have a very large fin efficiency. Maybe a cheaper metal that's not as good at conducting heat, where there is a steep temperature drop along the length of the fin, those will end up with a lower fin efficiency. There'll be a bigger difference between the heat transfer because there's a bigger difference in temperature. So I'm not gonna use the equation up on the screen right now. I'm just gonna put it here just for a second, just to show you. So in the numerator, this is my actual heat transfer from the fin. So I just grabbed this equation from the FE reference manual. And in the denominator, this is the actual heat transfer you would get if the entire fin were the same temperature. So this is basically just regular old convection equation, just H A delta T. But the cool thing that you'll notice is that you do not have to actually calculate this entire big thing. Most of these terms actually cancel out because of the term M. So this fin parameter M is the square root of H P over K A. It's kind of like a biot number in that it's like a ratio between convection and conduction. But as far as I know, it doesn't actually have a name, right? Most terms in most of your engineering classes are named after a scientist or engineer who discovered them or first used them. I've only ever seen this value M called the fin parameter, which is a super boring, non-memorable term at all. And so your sleeping TA Serenity has always wanted to have something named after her. So for the rest of this video, just for fun, I'm gonna call this value M, your TA Serenity's M, right? This is Serenity's number. And I think you're gonna love your TA Serenity's M because it totally simplifies this equation and means in order to solve for the fin efficiency for a rectangular fin, or in fact, even a cylindrical fin, any fin with a uniform cross section, it's just a hyperbolic tangent of ML divided by ML. That's it, you don't have to calculate the full heat transfer. The two ratios all simplify to this one really simple expression, simple-ish expression. And in your textbook, you may see this written as just L, just the length, but for a little bit of extra accuracy, I'm gonna use LC, the corrected length. The fin corrected length is a way to account for conduction at the tip. Most fin problems, you're gonna make a simplifying assumption and say that the tip is adiabatic because it's easy to account for heat transfer off the sides of the fin. It's a little bit more complicated to account for heat transfer off the tip of the fin right at the end. And so a good compromise is to use a corrected length where we take the amount of area at the end on the tip of the fin and find an equivalent amount of area that if we lengthened the fin just this little bit extra, we get the same amount of additional surface area around the side as is on the tip of the fin. So square root of HP over KA for M, we were given the value of H, 154 watts per meter squared Kelvin. And now I need the perimeter. So the perimeter is just the rectangle, right? The two top sides and the two side sides. <laughs> 
And so the perimeter is just all of the lengths as you go around the fin, top, bottom, left, and right. So my 0.1 meters in length, my 0.05 meters in height, and I get 0.21 meters as a total perimeter. Now probably every example problem you're gonna see in your textbook is gonna calculate perimeter a little bit differently than this. Most textbook examples are going to make an assumption that the thickness of the fin is negligible. And so they will calculate perimeter as just the top and bottom or just double the width of the fin. So they would call this 0.2. Now the thinner your fin, the better, the more accurate that assumption will be. But for this problem, I can see that if I made that assumption here, I would actually already be introducing about a 5% error into my problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and include it. It's not that hard to add this extra distance. I'm all about assumptions that make the problem easier. But in this case, this assumption is just being lazy. It doesn't really make it that much easier. K is the thermal conductivity that was given 235. And I can calculate the cross-sectional area Right, the fin parameter, Serenity's M, this A that's in the denominator is the cross-sectional area. So this is my width times the thickness, and I get 0 0.005 meters. Multiply together, big square root, Serenity's M ends up being 16.5, that's the fin parameter M. And the units for that are one over meters, it's one over length. And now for the corrected length, which again, the purpose of using corrected length is to make the answer a little bit more accurate by accounting for a little bit of convection out of the tip. And we've already calculated cross-sectional area and perimeter, so there's nothing new besides just plugging in the numbers. And we get a corrected length of 0 0.05238. And again, I'm calculating this a little bit different than the equation you will see in your textbook. The equation you'll see in your textbook for the corrected length for rectangular fin, instead of area over perimeter, is gonna be thickness divided by two. And the reason they're doing that is that when calculating the perimeter, if you ignore the thickness, then area over perimeter reduces to thickness divided by two. And this will be more accurate the thinner your thickness actually is, but for this problem, it introduces an unnecessary error. So I'm gonna use my green number because it's more accurate, but if you wanted to make the assumption that thickness was negligible at the same time that you're also using thickness, which is kind of weird, then that is perfectly valid and that's what a lot of textbook example problems are going to do. Just make sure you note it down as an assumption. So plug in all my numbers and I get a fin efficiency of 0 0.806. So this is like 80% efficient. The actual heat transfer from this fin is 80% as much as if the fin were perfectly conductive and the entire fin were at the wall temperature. And so 80% efficient is actually probably pretty good. So if you think your TA Serenity is doing a great job helping us out, you can reward her by hitting the thumbs up button and I'll reward her by giving her some belly rubs. So next thing I was trying to find, the actual heat transfer from the fin. So if I wanted to, I can grab the fin heat transfer equation and do another hyperbolic tangent or I could use the fin efficiency that I already found and kind of shortcut this a little bit. Because remember, at the beginning, we defined fin efficiency as the actual heat transfer of the fin divided by the idealized heat transfer if the whole thing were at the base temperature. So if I wanted to find that numerator, the heat transfer of the fin, I can get it with the efficiency that I've already found and with the much easier to find idealized heat transfers if the whole thing were at the base temperature. Right, I know my efficiency, 0 0.8065. I already know H was given 154. Now this area of the fin is gonna be the surface area, not the cross-sectional area, right? When using the regular convection equation, HA delta T, you want the total surface area that convection is happening over. So this is a new area that I'll have to calculate. And I can get the surface area, and think of like the surface area of a cylinder is the perimeter of your circle times the length of the cylinder. That's basically what I'm doing here, but with a rectangle. So the perimeter of my rectangle times the length of the rectangular fin. And again, for me, I'm gonna use the actual perimeter, my 0.21, including the thickness, because the 5% error makes a difference. And I'm also gonna use the corrected length so that I can kind of account for the extra area that's at the tip. So that's my 0.21 times my 0.05238. And that gives me a surface area for my rectangular fin of 0 0.011 meters squared. And my two temperatures were 350 degrees, which was the wall temperature, 25 degrees for the air temperature. I don't have to convert them to Kelvin because I'm gonna be subtracting them. So if I added 273 to both terms, it would just cancel out anyway. 
And with that, 444 watts as my heat transfer through the fin. No square roots, no hyperbolic tangent, I didn't have to recalculate the fin parameter M, Serenity's number. Just one surface area, use efficiency, and done. Okay, not done. <laughs> we still need to calculate fin effectiveness. There were three things to find, not just two. Sorry, your, your TA Serenity perked up there for a second. She thought we were done. So effectiveness and efficiency, both those are synonyms, right? They both mean essentially the same thing. So in this context, there's a very subtle difference between them. Efficiency was the heat transfer of the fin divided by heat transfer of the fin if the whole thing were the same temperature. So efficiency essentially accounts for how good of a conductor the fin is, like how close the fin is to all being the same temperature as the wall. Efficiency, therefore, is more about temperature, the temperature of the wall versus like the changing temperature throughout the fin. Effectiveness is more about surface area. So effectiveness is just heat transfer from the wall with the fin versus heat transfer from the wall without the fin. So like, imagine we did not have the fin there at all. You would just get heat transfer by convection from just like the cross-sectional area at the wall. And by adding the fin, we add more surface area so we get more convection. And so the question is, how much more convection do we get having the fin versus if we hadn't even built it at all? That is effectiveness. And therefore, effectiveness is not a percentage. In fact, effectiveness should always be greater than one. So a fin effectiveness of five would mean you get five times more heat transfer by having the fin versus not having the fin at all. So both efficiency and effectiveness are useful measures, but they do measure very different things. Efficiency a percentage, effectiveness a ratio. And so if effectiveness is actual heat transfer from the fin divided by the heat transfer you would get just from the cross-sectional area, we already found the heat transfer from the fin, so we could calculate a new heat transfer term, how much heat transfer would there be from convection just out of this cross-sectional area. But we don't actually need to do all of that because the efficiency term already kinda did that. And so this equation actually reduces to, you can calculate fin effectiveness as just your fin efficiency times a ratio of your areas. The surface area of the fin divided by the cross-sectional area of the fin, which is essentially the surface area of the fin divided by the surface area of the wall that the fin covers up. And it's a ratio of how much more surface area you have by adding the fin. So 0 0.8065 that we already calculated, the 0 0.011 was the surface area of the fin, and 0 0.0005 cross-sectional area of the fin. That gives us a fin effectiveness of 17.7, meaning by adding this fin, we get 17.7 times more heat transfer than we would get without it. And that should help demonstrate to you why we use fins. 17 times more heat transfer. So adding the extra surface area makes a huge difference in your ability to get rid of heat. And if you think you're getting it, but you want one more example problem to be sure, click on the video on the screen here for a cylindrical pin fin where we go into more detail about the difference between infinite length fins versus adiabatic tip versus actually accounting for convection at the tip of a fin.